Welcome home. We are so glad that you're here. At Tamak of Praise, our mission is to turn the hearts of the people in the community back to God, to reclaim those who have fallen by the wayside, and to win the lost to Christ. Each service has been designed with you in mind. Stay tuned for a word from the Bible teacher, Dario Nolte. I'm so excited that you're here tonight with us as we grow together in the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord give us life and it also sharps light into our dark situation. I encourage you to go ahead and share this, this live uh, post together with your friends, your families. The Bible says, whoever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of us. But also the Bible says, how can two walk together? except they are agreed. So share this with as many people that you are tied to. Make sure your sons and daughters, the daddies and fathers, uncles and aunties that you're here with us tonight. And we want to go into the full statue of who Christ is. Let us pray and we'll go directly to the word of the Lord. Lord, we thank you tonight for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come together in this place, which is a virtual sanctuary. We pray, God, that our hearts will be set on fire by your word. God, that you will open our ears and that our hearts be receptive to receive that which we will study tonight. I pray that the fruits of my lips, God, will always glorify your name and that your people will be edified for the word that we dive deeply into tonight. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. If you will, join me in Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. We're in Genesis chapter 25, and I want you to join me um, at verse 27 through 34. You will find there these words. When the boys grew up, Esau became an expert hunter, an outdoorsman. But Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for wild game. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field exhausted. He said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff because I'm exhausted. That is why he is also named Edom. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Look, said Esau, I'm about to die. So what good is a birthright 
to me. And Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to Jacob and sold his birthright to him. Then Jacob gave bread and a lentil stew to Esau. He ate, drank, got up, and went away. So Esau despised his birthright. In our series, Upgrading Your Lifestyle, I want to focus tonight on family problems. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what race, what ethnicity, what gender you are, how much money you have in the bank, how much money you don't have in the bank, what position you have, what position you don't have, how well you are succeeding in life and how much you may not be succeeding in life. We all have problems in our family. Doesn't matter if you were born into a certain family. It doesn't matter what side of the track you were born on. If you live on this earth, you will have fat problems inside of your family. Um, whether it's someone who is an alcoholic, whether it's someone who is a womanizer, someone who is misogynist, whether it's someone who who is just not blatant, not honest, whether it's someone who is a thief, whether it's someone who continues to break the law, we all have issues in our family. We all have dysfunctional families. And when we look at our text tonight, it is a reminder of the grace of God and God's calling and choosing a family that was dysfunctional. That Abraham family was dysfunctional. God says to him in Genesis chapter 12, I need you to leave your family. The question is, God, why leave the family? Because if you keep hanging with the family, then you're going to be dysfunctional just as they are. And I need to get you into a space right now because uh, if I don't get you into a certain space, Abraham, um, you'll never step into who I called you or purpose you and destiny you to become. And so Abraham leaves the house. But although he leaves the house, uh, part of who he was was part of the family. And so he took problems with him. Why? Because he was born into the family and you can't separate yourself from who you really are. So he took problems with him. Even to the fact there was problems inside of his household when it came time for him to have a child. Him and his wife, you, you remember Sarah, they, they made an agreement. They made an arrangement. They decided to get a surrogate where they would allow Hagar to be the surrogate for their child and which brought more problems and more tension inside of the house because there was problems in the family we will quickly learn that after Isaac is born that he is 40 years old and if you read the ancient Jewish rabbi, they would say someone been 40 years old and not married, they typically cursed. Isaac is 40 years old, still stand in his parents' house. He has no wife. He has no children. And so the Bible lets us know that there was problems or there was troubles in the house or trouble in the house. So his parents devised a plan to arrange a marriage. There was no eHarmony. There was no Match.com. There was no Facebook dating. There were no, no apps they can find um, um, uh, dates on. But the family decided to arrange marriages. Why did the family decide that? Because the family knew that who you attach yourself to can either help catapult you into your promise um, or stymie or, or, or depress the progress uh, that God will have you to move ahead with in your life. And so Abraham's servant finds a wife and finds favor and finds a wife um, by their kinfolks and brings Rebecca back to Isaac. 
Now he's 40 years old. He's married now. And the Bible lets us know as soon as he get married at the beginning of this chapter, chapter 25, we discover that there are still more problems in the family. You say, what is that problem? It's the same problem that his dad and mom had. Now, now, now his wife is barren and can't have children. But what I love about the text is that the text teaches us something that we didn't see in Abraham. The Bible says that when Isaac learned that his wife was barren or without child, he prayed. Tonight, our first point I want to say to you tonight, uh, that when you got destiny on your life, you got promise on your life, when you're upgrading your lifestyle, you got family problems, um, you got to make sure that you have a prayer life. Because any time you have issues, you have to have a higher power that you can talk to. Because there's some issues uh, that man cannot help you with. There are some things that are only left up to God. And God will allow us to get into certain situations when we're upgrading our lifestyle that we can only depend on him. See, what do you mean? When Abraham and Sarah was unable or incapable or was barren from having a child, they started to take malice into their own hands and they spoke to the flesh instead of speaking to God. We are seeing that now that the generations are growing, Isaac, instead of moving closer to the flesh, he prays to God. Jesus says to us that man ought to always pray and not faint. And so while you're upgrading your lifestyle, it's important that you remember you got to have a prayer life. It does no good to, to upgrade your lifestyle if you have no relationship with God. Prayer is simply us allowing God into a dire situation. That when we pray to God, we say, God, we can't handle the situation that we're in. We are giving you permission to come into this situation, God, to throw your weight around for you to do what only you can do. And that's why you have to walk with God. Because in walking with God, God knows how to address every problem that you have that you're not capable of addressing on your own. It's important that you hear this tonight um, because we just can't pray, God, do this, God, do that, because God will only do that which we are incapable of doing on our own. But for the things that you can do on your own, God will not do it. <clears throat> Let me say that again. God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. You say, I don't read no scripture saying that. God has given you the power. To do things for yourself. God intervenes and do for you what you are not capable of doing for yourself. I think I need to stay there for a moment. And upgrading your lifestyle, we have to understand that God will only do for us what we're not capable of doing for ourselves. Are you listening to me tonight? Do, do you hear me tonight? Uh, that we can't ask God uh, to put in the application for us. We have to put the application in ourselves. Um, we can't ask God to study for us. We have to study for ourselves. Um, we, 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 we have basically uh, tried to basically um, use the Holy Spirit as a crutch. Um, they say the Spirit is going to reveal things to me or the Spirit is going to do for me. No, that does not take away from our responsibility of studying, our responsibility of learning, our responsibility of training, our responsibility of developing all the skills that we have uh, and allow God to bring add the spirit to it. And so when we're upgrading our lifestyles and there's problems in the family, we got to make sure that there's somebody in the family that has a prayer life. Isaac prayed for his wife. And what I love about the text, not only did he pray for his wife, when he prayed for his wife, God responded to the prayer. I'm here tonight to tell you, if you would just pray for your family, if you would just pray for your family, then God will respond to your prayer. He was praying about a specific situation. It wasn't some general prayer. 
The amazing means people want you to pray, but they don't want to be specific. God, God don't answer general prayers. He answers specific prayers. He said, when you pray, the reason why you're not getting your prayer answer is because you are asking amiss, that you are asking for the wrong motives or the wrong reasons. But God is specific in answering your prayer. God wants to answer what is really behind the prayer. God responded, Rebecca conceived, but when she conceived, there was a war going on inside of her. I love this text. It's so rich. There was a war going on inside of her based off of what Isaac had prayed for. Which says to us, huh, our initial answer to the prayer sometimes may seem as if we're going into war. It may seem as we're going into battle when we are first received the answer to the prayer. And I love the story that Rebecca, not only was Isaac a prayer, Rebecca was a prayer. She began to ask God the question, what is this happening to me? And God said, I'm glad you asked. I can tell you while you're dealing with this situation in your family, while you're trying to upgrade your lifestyle, I can tell you why you're dealing with it. And you know the story. God said, there's two nations inside of you that they are, they shall be separated, that the older shall serve the younger. And the Bible lets us know when she gave birth to Esau, that, I, well, that Jacob came out grabbing this heel of his brother, which I love that part of the text. That's not why we're now our focus tonight, but just for the sake of this moment, I love what that text says to us is that Jacob says, I refuse to be second. Mm -hmm. When you're upgrading your lifestyle, that's the kind of tenacity, that's the kind of goal you have to have to say, I refuse to be second in life. I may have been born second, huh? but I'm not going to finish second. Huh? I may not have been born with anything, but I'm not going to finish uh, in lack. I may have not come in in the right circumstances, huh? but I'm going to end in the right circumstances. Why? I'm a fighter and I'm determined to win. Somebody ought to task tag that I'm determined to win. So Jacob, huh, we learn very quickly that Jacob is a fighter, that he's someone even from the womb who's grasping to be first. He is grasping to be out front. He is grasping for, to, to be the one who's in charge. We learn that from the beginning of his birth story. Are you ready to get, I said all of that for us to get into what I want us to focus on tonight. <laughs> When we get to verse 27, the text says, when the boys grew up, we don't have any details on what was being said, but the scripture gives us a peek of what may have actually transpired or what led to what is said in verse 27. So Esau became, as he was growing up, he became an expert hunter, an outdoorsman. But Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. And the Bible says Isaac loved Esau. But he loved him with conditions. He loved him, the text says, because he had a taste for wild game. You, you just can't read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. He loved him because he had a taste. For a while game, but Rachel, or excuse me, Rebecca loved Jacob. I want to talk to you, and I guess this would be our second point, uh, or maybe our third point, because the, the, the second point was a bonus that you got to be a fighter, that you're destined to win. I, I, I will say this to you, is that the issue we have with upgrading lifestyle, or the family problem that we have, is favoritism. Okay, I know I, I know I wouldn't get the response that 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 I thought we would get right there. The problem what we see here in the text is favoritism. That we got favoritism that's being played out amongst the family members. We got favoritism that's going on and with the with the family members. And, and the big problem is they're twins, they're not identical, and they got their own personalities, and the Bible says. That Isaac loved the one who was a hunter or loved him because he was a hunter. And so he got, Esau experienced more of 
affection from his father mm -hmm, because of his success. He experienced affection because he did something that his daddy loved. And many of us have discounted our own greatness because of what happened to us as a child. That the daddy loved Esau because of what he did. And don't you know that every time that Esau received love from his father, that Jacob was hurt when he didn't receive the same level of affection. And I know you had you heard people say you got to love your children differently or you can't love them the same. But with the same level of energy, the same level of affection, uh, all children should receive love. You may have to teach them different. You may have to get them to respond in different ways or use different tactics to get them to respond. But you don't make one of them feel more love than the other. The Bible says that Isaac loved Esau. And his love for Esau was based off of his skills and what he was successful in. And the Bible lets us know, you have to read the text, um, that take note that Esau's defining moment came when he failed at what he was successful in. Uh, Esau became very hungry and lost focus, uh, or he rather, rather lost focus. Esau became very hungry and he started focusing on what he was celebrated for. Ah, uh, what do you mean? Because he was able to eat from the wild game he would hunt uh, when he was not successful, he had an appetite to fulfill or to give a false impression uh, or, or to substitute uh, for his lack of success. Uh, I'm talking to you. And listen. Everybody can't be Jacob in the story. Somebody has to be Esau. So, so if you're Esau, just because um, you have been successful in the area, you have to be leery that you don't allow yourself to succumb or be tempted uh, in a quick substitute uh, for what you've been successful in. That you don't sell yourself short because you know you will be celebrated for when you're successful in something. And when you're not successful in that area, that you receive a substitute just to satisfy a temporary moment. So Esau, the finding moment inside of the Bible, the finding moment inside of his life was when he failed to be successful in the area where he had great success. And so every time Esau would come out from the field, that his daddy would show him extra affection. And Jacob, oh, I feel you, Jacob. Jacob had to sit there in that tent to see every time his brother came home with wild game, his daddy loved on him, loving on him. Don't you think that Jacob may have one time attempted to be a honor? Just so he can receive the same affection. I hope you're listening to me. That, that, that Jacob maybe attempted to be a hunter at one time. The Bible doesn't let us know. But you'll be amazed what we as human beings would do to get affection ah, from our fathers. That, 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 that Jacob had to watch his brother being loved on every time he went on the field to be successful. And then part of Esau wondered that day, that defining moment, that if I'm unsuccessful and go back home to my father, ah, where I receive the same level of affection. I hope we have some parents that are listening tonight that we cannot Based our children's affection based off on how successful they are. That is not whether they fail or succeed. They ought to be loved. 
by us in particular, if we got any fathers that are listening tonight, that all of this time there was a wound in Jacob's heart. Why? Because his father loved Esau. And he loved Esau because of what he did. And many of our sons and daughters um, have skills and they are they are gifted, uh, but they're not gifted in the area in which we may want them to be in. Uh, but that doesn't mean we treat them different because one child is doing better in another area. Uh, tonight, I know we're here, and we, we, we're here for young people, but I, I, I hope we got some parents listening tonight. Huh? Because of the difference uh, in treatment and how they were showing them, we enter into the dangers. Yes, 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 that is the dangers of favoritism. You say, what are the dangers of, of favoritism? When we have parents who will play children against each other, it does something or it creates depression in our children. That, that maybe our sons and daughters are walking around depressed because all this time the father has said that you don't measure up. Ah, that, 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 that maybe the reason there's behavior problems uh, is because someone down the road that they saw that the lack of affection said that they didn't measure up. And because I don't measure up, I, I hope you're listening tonight, uh, that, 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 that now I'm suffering from, from, from confidence. I got low self-esteem uh, because the father didn't show affection towards me whether I succeeded in a particular area or not. Um, that the issue with many of our sons and daughters um, is, 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 is that they grew up in an unstable situation and they experienced traumatic, um, tra or they experienced trauma in that situation and now they have problems with relationships. Ah, uh, yes, we, we got problems with relationship. Uh, and, and, and here's what we see in the text. Uh, since Jacob could not get his father's affection, we will see this played on throughout the rest of the Old Testament. It is the generational echo that, 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 that we hear throughout the entire Old Testament that now when Jacob has sons, I hope you're following me, you will see how it impacts how he treat his son, that he loved Joseph, which caused Joseph to get sold over to slavery. The reason, and, and we, we give Jacob such a hard time in saying that he, he showed favoritism, but it only came from the point in which he experienced that type of treatment from his own father. Oh, I hope we got fathers tonight because we got any fathers here listening to us tonight. Uh, we need to make sure that we don't show favoritism among our children. Uh, that when we do, we wound our children when we show favoritism. That's the problem inside of the family. We got too many wounded children inside of the house. And Jacob was wounded. And when you are wounded, ah, you look for ways to create space for yourself. Jacob, the Bible says one day, let me read the text to you. The Bible says once Jacob, or once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came into the field exhausted. I need to say this to you. Don't think this happened by happenstance. That Jacob may have been plotting because he is a schemer. The Bible says he's a trickster. That Jacob had been plotting to say, I can't get my father's affection, but I'm going to devise a plan that I'm going to get from my brother, which my father was going to give to him. That, that, that he would devise a plan because you would have to ask yourself, what would make a, a, young, a brother try to um, try to decide? Receive his own brother. Somewhere down the road, Rebecca had to tell him uh, that when I was carrying you, son, uh, God told me you had promise on your life. Ah! God, when I was carrying you, uh, you had promise on your life. Um, and, and then part of you, 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 you having a promise on your life, uh, some people w w won't recognize uh, when they are mishandling you. Ah, forget the notes tonight. I got the, the point. I got to talk to you. Uh, um, 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 when you got problems in your life, huh, people don't realize how they are mishandling you and mistreating you. And anytime you got someone who is gifted, if they don't receive the level of acceptance from their father, they will use their gifting uh, in the wrong way and they'll use that gifting uh, and they'll hurt other people. 
you didn't hear what I said. Uh, the birthright was already promised to him, um, but he sped up the pro or he tried to speed up the process uh, by devising a plan. He, 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 in my imagination, he already knew there would be a day that he was not successful. And that he said, when the opportunity come, when the opportunity presents itself, uh, I'm going to be ready to implement my plan. Jacob eyes are wide open when Esau comes from the field one day with no wild game. Jacob said to himself, I'm going to see if he's going to get the same level of affection today as he would get every other time he would return from the field with wild game. And he said, brother, uh, um, uh, um, let me talk to you for a moment. Esau goes over and says, I'm hungry. As you can see, Jacob, I haven't been successful in the field. He said, let me eat some of the red stuff uh, because I am exhausted. I'm tired of out here spending all my energy trying to be successful in the area just to get the affection from my father. And, and, and you got to read the story. This is bigger than just somebody eating a bowl of soup and leaving his out leaving and, and losing his birthright. He said, I'm tired of doing all this work. I'm out here. I haven't been successful. Brother, won't you just help me? And give me some of that red stuff. I don't care what it is. Just give me something to eat. And you notice here in the text. Ah, oh, the text is letting us in. If you can see through the eyes of faith, the text is opening up to us, giving us some background information about both brothers. Esau is exhausted from trying to be successful in the area where his daddy loved him because he was successful in. And Jacob, the Bible says, she says, sell me your first birthright. All this time, Jacob been looking for his father to give to him where he was given to his brother. And so you got two brothers who are wounded. Ah, and when both of them are wounded, there is an exchange of one from one end. There's not appreciation uh, what the father was going to pass on. And on the other end, uh, you will manipulate to get from the father. So he says to him, promise me that you're going to give me your birthright. And Esau says, look, brother, I'm about to die from trying to please my daddy. Ah. I feel the text. He says, I'm about to die from trying to please my daddy. So what good is a birthright to me? What's good to what God is going to, what's good that my father is going to give to me when I'm out here dying trying to please him? It's not the act that should be accepting to the parent. What should be accepting to the fact that, just, that the child is yours. He said, I'm about to kill myself out here trying to do what my daddy finds rewarding. Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him, the Bible says, and Jacob received his brother's birthright. And the Bible, verse 34, and we're about to get out of here for the sake of time. The Bible says this, said Esau despised his birthright why would he despise his birthright now you have to understand the birthright meant that he would get double portion among any other son the birthright mean he will be the leader of the entire family when the father is no longer present that he despised being leader and he despised receiving double why because his daddy made him work for it Esau is in the position, if it takes all of this to please you, I don't want it. Jacob is in a position because I'm not experiencing the level of affection of my father. I want Esau what you don't want. Because when dad is no longer here, I want the double portion. I want to be the leader of the family. And you can see the relationship of these siblings, which are torn. Isaac loved Esau because he was a successful hunter. And Rebecca loved Jacob, the trickster. The trickster. I want to ask you tonight, as we look at this text, are you Esau 
or are you Jacob? Because there's problems in the family. When you're upgrading your lifestyle, you can't do it. Not understanding problems that may occur in the family. You ask me what God is up to in the world? It's keeping family, family. You can't help what family you were born into. You, you can't choose what family you were born to. If God has you in that family, he has you there in that family for a specific reason that is part of your destiny. And yes, we will, we, 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 we will see later on in our study that both brothers end up blessed. But they route to get into the upgraded lifestyle went the direction they went because of how the father handled them. It is said, what will make you laugh will also make you cry. Isaac named him laughter, but we see wounds in of both sons. Tonight, if you're listening and you may be that wounded child, I want you to know tonight that you have a father that loves you in spite of what you do, not because of what you do, but he loves you because you belong to him. You belong to him. Won't you pray this prayer with me if you have never accepted his love? So, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. You said if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that I will be saved. Lord, I confess you now and ask you to come into my life and be my personal savior. From this day forth, I live for you to the glory of your name. Now, if you pray that prayer, make sure you're inside of a church home, a Bible-believing church, someone who can teach you the word of the Lord. If you would love to be a member of, a, of, the, of the top, send us a message here on social media. We'll reach back out to you. We'll soon to come back into the church, and we will welcome you with open arms. For everyone else, I'm going to ask you to return your tithe, give your offering, sow your seed, that you are to never to come before the Lord empty-handed, but that you're always to bring a gift unto the King of Kings. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Return all the tithes and offerings to his storehouse. Give, give, and it shall be given to you. The Bible says we are to give, we are to give cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. He's able to make all grace abound towards you. Amen. Listen, thank you for your time. We're out of time, but we're not out of grace. It is my hope and prayer as we leave this place, but never God's grace, that the Lord will bless you and keep you. That the Lord will let his face shine upon you. That the Lord will lift his countenance upon you. And that he will give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. And remember that there's victory in your praise.